G4TV remains dead, and I'm very pleased to report that. However, was it entirely about Frosk and the sexism in gaming rant, or Adam Sessler and his ridiculously hardline beliefs about Republicans, or his threats to people and calling them out for a fight? No. 80% probably yes. But the other 20% was the fact that everything had changed before G4 came back, and they were basically throwing themselves into a pool where they no longer had one or two competitors, they had millions. They never really had a chance, and that's probably why you can only say that Sessler and Frosk expedited the death of G4. They didn't entirely cause it. There were already way too many signs that this was not going to work. Hello. Welcome back to Will of the Fans, my name is Will, see what I did there, and let's go over to Bounding Into Comics and check out this article, Opinion. Comcast G4 reboot was doomed to fail long before Frost's sexism in gaming rant. Well, yeah, it probably was. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, you know what to do, hit that button and hit that like. Thank you very much. So, your multi-million dollar reboot died in less than a year. Well... It did, and it did because of some seriously stupid decisions by management. I mean, quite honestly, the entire thing was a bad idea. It just was, and everybody knows it. Let's go into that, shall we? This is quite a long article, so I'm going to get through it as fast as I can. Okay. For the second time in the last decade and just 10 months into Comcast's attempt to revive it, G4 is officially dead. The door shut on its legacy, this time for good. Seven weeks. That's all the time it took for now former ex-play host Indiana Black, aka Froskerin or Frosk, to blow the whole thing to bits with her now infamous rant. It's in a surprise to absolutely no one after she dismissively wrote off critics as disgusting sexists and told both current and potential audiences, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace. People chose not to watch. Exactly. Now, of course, we could sit here and lay blame for the destruction of G4's legacy on Frost, uttering those three simple words, sexism in gaming. But that wouldn't be telling you the whole story, believe it or not, G4's revival was dead on arrival years before Frost ever opened her mouth. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the reality here is that when you decide to start making gaming content on YouTube, you think your previously established TV show brand is going to carry you to greatness? I don't think so. There are millions, and I mean millions, of gaming channels on YouTube. You have a very, very slim chance of drawing any attention to yourself, really. You're up against at least PewDiePie, let alone like all the normal boots guys, and every independent person out there who's just like, hey guys, this is Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. We're gonna play the game that everybody's played. You know? It's like... You're hopeless if you think this is going to work. And why? Because after 10 years, NBC Universal never addressed the true reason why G4 died in the first place. Okay. Initially launched on April 24th, 2002, G4 was born of an era where the novelty of having thousands of channels to watch was as strong a gimmick for digital cable customers as the concept of a video game centric television channel. Look at that. A network for gamers by gamers. That was G4's original motto. It's ironic, really, when you see Adam Sessler's picture right underneath it and know the kinds of crap that he says to gamers. We're still waiting for you to call us out, Adam. Come on, organize us into a queue. We'll take you on. Though it had some solid enough premise, things started off less than smooth for G4 as the network had a significant problem with outreach. In the early days, they were only available roughly in roughly 15 million households, blah, 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 so on, so on, so on. It didn't go that well. Still, they became Tech TV, which had two things that G4 did not, programming and outreach. Despite its current reputation as the missile that sunk G4 ship, X-Play started out as one of Tech TV's flagship programs. Hosted by Morgan Webb and Adam Sessler, the show popularized the idea of on-screen video game reviews made up of equal parts humorous skits and analysis. Perhaps its, well, uh, its most well-known show was The Screensavers, a computer and technology-focused program hosted by Leo Laporte, don't know him, whose hosting career continues to flourish to this day, which sought to help viewers with their hardware and software related questions. Fair enough. Anyway, it carries on, and there, of course, we can see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Olivia Munn certainly wasn't just there to be nice on the eyes for you. Of course not. After acquiring Tech 4 TV, G4 proceeded to fire the majority of the former employees from their San Francisco offices, probably. Good idea, because San Francisco is garbage, and moved the entire joint operation to Los Angeles. Not only that, but they ended up making so many cuts to Tech TV's programming that the only shows left from the network's standalone run was X-Play 
and screensavers, though the latter was rebranded into Attack of the Show, and then hit the Golden Age. Eventually, G4 Tech TV would once again become simply G4, and it was this move that ultimately led to the channel's downfall. Though they had X-Play and Attack of the Show, G4 was desperate for any content that could keep audiences engaged and advertisers happy. By 2010, G4 was creatively bankrupt. As a result, the network took to hiring more variety type program airing rather more variety type programs over gaming specific ones such as Ninja Warrior, Cheetahs, and a handful of random Japanese game shows, unsurprisingly offering only two flagship shows and making up the rest of its daily airtime with the 20 hour block of Cheetahs wasn't keeping anyone from changing the channel. Yeah, exactly, and there's Morgan Webb. Anyway, it carries on, it carries on. But of course, they eventually decided that there was absolutely no point in continuing and would stop offering the channel. So, in the wake of this decision, Attack of the Show hosts Kevin Pereira and Olivia Munn, whose chemistry was the only reason the show worked in the first place, left G4 to pursue their own respective Hollywood careers. Attack of the Show would never recover from this loss. This is the fundamental problem with the efforts to reboot G4. After being told 12 years ago that G4 had no value in the eyes of audiences, NBC Universal decided to try again, but with no consideration to the question of how are we going to sell something to people they weren't interested in back in 2010. Instead, those in charge thought the simple act of bringing back X-Play and Attack of the Show in 2021 would lead viewers to flock back to the network. Well, it takes a little bit more than disguising nostalgia or disguising wokeness as nostalgia because that's exactly what you got. It's exactly the same as when they reboot something and they put in a female instead of a dude or they race swap the characters. It's got nothing to do with the fact that they're female or race swapped. It's the fact that they're just insulting the original. It's what people don't like. Anyway, the writing was on the walls for the G4 format even before its second official revival. Years after G4's first death, Pereira tried to keep the show going and attempted to revive Attack of the Show on his own dime, launching the attack on YouTube. Of course, that didn't work very well either. Yet, even with the network's longest tenured history at the helm and uh, other former G4 hosts like Candace Bailey and Sarah Underwood poop are popping in from time to time, the attack never worked. The problem was, by 2015, no one was interested in an Attack of the Show style program, much less a near one-to-one -one clone of the entire thing. Yep, it's right there. Looks exactly like it used to. Obviously isn't going to work because you have so many wacky gamer channels on YouTube who don't have to worry about promotion, advertising, or budget, or anything like that. Then there is the Adam Sessler problem. Sessler was fired from X-Play in 2012 because he'd grown a reputation for being difficult to work with. Well, he is a drug addict. His mental state would only deteriorate as he started yelling at gamers, bitching at the general industry, and overall just becoming a miserable person, and then came Donald Trump. The election of Trump was for Sessler, like many, the straw that broke the camel's back for their rationality. After the former president was elected to office, Sessler went on to become one of the most prominent faces of the internet's punch Nazi and it's okay to dox people I don't like movements. At this point, long-term fans of Sessler, some going as far back to his days on Tech TV and Ziff Davis TV, could no longer stand to listen to him. With every outburst, and there were many Sessler lost fans, popularity and credibility. So, when considering a revival of X-Play, who did NBC Universal tap to host it? Not Morgan Webb, who still maintains a significant like, uh, level of likability with the overwhelming fans of both Tech TV and the original, nor any of the others. No, they brought back Sessler. Oh, by the way, shout out to Chris Gore. He's the man. So there you go. On one hand, it admittedly makes sense to bring him back. He'd been associated with the network all the way back to 1998, but he's not the same Adam from 24 years ago. No, he's a raging lunatic, a hate monger who soaks in his own misery and has gone so far as to wish death on his family because of their political voting history. So, yeah, we're basically up to date now. There were so many reasons why this show was never going to work. But, of course, the biggest problem they faced is the fact that YouTube and Twitch allow for regular players to make Let's Plays, cover gaming news, and entertain with original content. Hi, you're watching Will of the Fans. My name is Will. Let me know what you think about all of this crap in the comments section down below, and of course, like the video if you have enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. I'll be back with another video for you very soon, but until then, see you next time.